Hello and welcome to today's episode of the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Hindu sect accused of using forced labor in the United States. Migdad al Kawasme ends hunger strike after 113 days. Negotiations continue on second draft of COP26 deal. And Pakistan removes TLP leader from terror watch list. In our first story, we go to the United States where fresh allegations of forced labor have been made against a prominent Hindu sect. The BAPS Swami Narayan Sanstha operates a temple in New Jersey and reportedly maintains close ties with right-wing Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. United States federal agents conducted a raid on the New Jersey temple on May 11th. This was after a worker died at the site in 2020. According to India's Civil Watch International, around 200 workers were rescued in the raid. A group of workers filed a lawsuit against BAPS on the same day, alleging violations of labor and immigration laws. The lawsuit named six men out of over 200 Indian citizens who were lured into the United States around 2018 on religious R1 visas. A New York Times report stated that the men were then forced to work seven days a week while being paid $1 an hour. The BAPS intentionally targeted workers from historically oppressed caste communities in India. Their passports were confiscated and they were confined to the temples and hidden trailers. The lawsuit stated that at least three people who had worked on BAPS temples died in India soon after leaving the United States. While the original lawsuit was limited to New Jersey, the amended case extends to five states in total. This includes sites in Atlanta, Chicago, Houston, and Los Angeles. The work was dangerous and involved shifting heavy stones, digging ditches, and building roads. Workers were only paid $450 a month. BAPS has also been accused of violating the Racketeer-Influenced and Corrupt Organizations or RICO Act, which deals with organized crime. In our next story, Palestinian political prisoner Migdad al kawasami has ended his hunger strike after 113 days. He ended his protest after Israeli officials agreed to release him in February 2022. This will also coincide with the end of his administrative detention. He was arrested in January and placed under detention in July without charge or trial. He had previously spent over four years in Israeli prisons. According to his family, his body weight had nearly halved since July. Despite his deteriorating health condition, Israel extended his administrative detention on November 4th. Moreover, officials also announced that Kawasame would be shifted from the Kaplan Medical Center to a Ramla prison clinic. At least six other Palestinian prisoners are currently on hunger strike to protest their administrative detention. Among them is Kayed al fasfuz who has been on hunger strike for 121 days now. He has been in prison since October 2020 and launched his protest in July. His detention order was frozen for a second time by an Israeli court last week. All this did was remove all responsibility for his life from Israeli authorities. Instead, it was placed on medical staff at the Barzilai Medical Center, where Fasfuz is currently being held. Other prisoners, including Allah al-Araz and Hisham Abu Hawash, has been on hunger strike for varying periods between 30 to 94 days. Over 4,500 Palestinian prisoners being held in Israel refused two meals on November 7th in solidarity. Israel is currently holding over 500 Palestinians under administrative detention in violation of international law. Up next, a second draft of the final COP26 agreement was released on the last official day of the conference on November 12th. The decisions will have legal weight and can only be adopted with the consensus of the 196 countries represented in Glasgow. New analysis by Climate Action Tracker shows that the world is headed for a 2.4 degree warming under current emissions pledges. 
COP26 has so far produced separate pledges by groups of countries with some targets set decades in the future. With negotiations expected to go beyond Friday, the draft text shows a weakening of language on key commitments. In particular, it has added qualifiers to the phase-out of fossil fuels. It calls on countries to accelerate the phase-out of unabated coal power and inefficient fossil fuel subsidies. Text also uses the word request to ask countries to present their nationally determined contributions to reduce emissions by 2022 instead of after five years. Meanwhile, it has removed end of the century as a target for limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. The draft text has also removed references to undefined na nature-based solutions while adding a reference to social and environmental safeguards. However, it retains references to net zero despite the serious threat it poses to frontline communities. Concerns have also been raised about negotiations around Article 6 of the Paris Agreement. Observers are urging countries to center human rights and proper safeguards instead of expanding carbon markets, allowing for double counting and other things. Gaps also remain with regard to climate financing, particularly laws and damage payments to vulnerable countries. And finally, we go to Pakistan, where the government has removed far-right Tariq el party leader Saad Rizvi from its terror watch list. This follows days after Prime Minister Imran Khan revoked a ban on the party. The group had also held protests for weeks, including a march to Islamabad in October to demand Rizvi's release. Several casualties were reported and around 2,000 TLP members were detained. They were later released after an agreement between the TLP and the government on October 31st. Rizvi's removal from the terror watch list on November 11th has now cleared the way for his possible release from detention. He was placed in custody in April after protests demanding the expulsion of the French ambassador from Pakistan. This was related to alleged Islamophobic comments of President Emmanuel Macron in the Charlie Hebdo case. The TLP has now withdrawn this demand. The extremist group has gained significant support over the years by targeting instances of alleged blasphemy. It became Pakistan's fifth largest political party in 2018 elections after securing over 2 million votes. The government has now allowed the group to contest elections again. These recent developments have raised concerns of sectarian tensions and growing far-right influence in Pakistan. According to the left-wing Mazdoor Kisan Party, the TLP has been able to mobilize support among marginalized groups who have been excluded from the state's modernization project. The country is already facing a socio-economic crisis, including record-breaking inflation. And that's all for today. For most such stories, visit our website at www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you.